Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Time Room Sports Show right here on WCTV. We got a lot of stuff to uncover, including the Cleveland Guardians. And the guy you'll see right there in a minute is Mr. Angel Martinez. He's not doing shabby. I mean, 234 average, two home runs, six RBIs, 667 on base or OPS. Keep in mind, he's only a rookie. He hasn't played that much. Give him some time. 22 hits, 10 walks, 19 strikeouts. On base percentage of 305. What else has he done? 10 runs scored and 94 at bats. So he's 22 for 94 in his career. And you can't forget about guys like Josh Naylor, or Bo Naylor, who's batting 203. Yikes. But he does have seven home runs and 20 RBIs, which I'd like to remind you folks, not shabby considering what he did yesterday, or Monday, I should say. Then there's Josh Naylor, who carries a 241 average, but that's not the main story. The main story is that he's got 293, uh, no, not 293. 23 home runs and 74 RBIs. And then Jose Ramirez, who's now second all-time in franchise history for home runs with 243. He passed Albert Bell for third all-time, the only man with more home runs in Guardians franchise history, none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Jim Tomey. But a 275 average for Mr. Ramirez with 27 home runs, and he's already with 20 swipes. That is not shabby. You know what also wasn't shabby? What the Guardians have done over the last couple of days. A nice little three-game winning streak is what they are on. And not to mention, they beat the best team in baseball in the Philadelphia Phillies in a two-games-to-one set. Yes, two-games-to-one. Game one was a good one, considering the fact that Martinez had an RBI. So did Bo Naylor, and so did David Fry. And Ben Lively won six innings, gave up three hits, one run, and six strikeouts on 90 pitches. And who else but Emmanuel Quase on to save his 32nd of the season. Then the second game, things did not go well. The Phillies had a baseball congo line in the uh, fourth inning where they cashed in seven runs. And Carlos Cresco got lit up in that inning. My goodness, he didn't even get out of that inning. He gave up six runs, Carrasco, the usually good Carrasco, has been showing that he is kind of past his prime now. How old is he? Well, he is 37, that might explain why, but still. What was really frustrating was that the pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies and Tyler Phillips through a complete game shutout. My goodness. I love my complete game shutouts. I don't love it, however, when it's against the good old Guardians. 105 pitches for Mr. Phillips. Four hits, one walk. This might have helped him get the uh, complete game shutout. Four strikeouts. So there was that. Just the mere four strikeouts. Second time the Guardians have been the victim of a complete game shutout, joining the likes of... Tanner Houck earlier this season. And then you have the third game, which the Guardians did win. Kyle Schwarber had a two-home run game in that game. But, however, John Kenzie Noel had a three-run bomb, and Stephen Kwan broke the tie in the seventh inning. Then there was the game on Monday, a two-game series. Oddly enough, the Guardians on Wednesday do not play, which is very odd. Usually it's Mondays and Thursdays when you're off. But anyways, 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 it was a good game for the Guardians because Jose Ramirez had not one but two home runs, three runs scored, three RBIs. He did a dandy, to say the least. And Bo Naylor had a three-run bomb as well. It was in the sixth inning. And get, uh, not Gavin Williams, but rather Tanner Bybee went six innings, gave up two runs. He did not do shabby. And that was a 5 nothing shutout win for the Guardians yesterday. Gavin Williams won 5 innings, 90 pitches, 2 hits, 8 strikeouts. That might explain why he had so many pitches. And Jose Ramirez did Jose Ramirez things, i.e. hit a home run. And Josh Naylor did Josh Naylor things, which is also hit a home run. 
So who's next for Cleveland? Baltimore in a four-game series. Ooh, I'm just saying August 3rd, it's going to be on Channel 8. So there is that big series. And MLB Network's got you covered Sunday. And then after that, it'll be the Arizona Diamondbacks. And then the Twins. And then really that's basically all. Of course, that game right there, of course, was the Guardians game yesterday. Well, the Guardians are up six and a half on the Twinkies and the Royals. And are an incredible 39 and a half ahead of the White Sox. Oh my God, the White Sox are truly a national embarrassment and a national disgrace. Considering the fact that they have lost 16 straight now. There is, or it is closer between Oakland and the, let's think. If it's 33 minus uh, 14.5, let me check. That's 18 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 18 and a half. It is closer to the A's in the second wild card. Unfortunately, not the first wild card in the Yankees, but the second wild card, Minnesota and Kansas City. That is from Oakland to Chicago. Worst team in Major League history. Maybe, maybe. Anyways, enough about the Guardians. Enough of me yelling about the White Sox considering the fact that they lose on a regular basis. That is sad. That is depressing. That is embarrassing. But enough on them. More on high school football. Yes, sir. We got a good 23 days to go till it's time for high school football. And we are doing more high school football picks. Yes, sir. On my spreadsheet I have on my Google Sheets account, I'm at page 100. No, 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 not page 129. Um, but uh, let's think. Row 129. And I have a bunch of columns, of course. But enough of that. Let's look at the Metro Athletic Conference. Norton Panthers, 10-0, 7-0. Streetsboro Rockets, 7 and 3, 5 and 2. The Woodridge Bulldogs, 6 and 4, 5 and 2. Just like the Streetsboro Rockets, they'll be 5 and 2. Cloverleaf Colts will be in fourth place with a 6 and 4, 4 and 3 record. Ravenna Ravens, 3 and 4 by a 5 and 5 even. Field Falcons, 3 and 7, 2 and 5. Springfield, going to be 4 and 6, 1 and 6. And last but not least, Coventry, 2-8, and 0-7. The weird thing about the Metro Athletic Conference this year is that everybody is a Division IV school. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody is a Division IV school, and everybody in that uh, Division IV conference is in Division IV Region 13, unless you are Cloverleaf. Then the, in that case, the Colts are Division uh, IV Region 14. But yeah, that is something interesting. I remember last year, Norton was Division Three, as was Cloverleaf. <clears throat> A few of those schools were Division Three. Let me check to see if I was not mistaken. I know Norton was Division Three, and Cloverleaf was also Division Three. Other than that, everyone else still Division Four. So there was that. There was that. Anyway, it's time to do something a little more complicated. The independents, of course, they are not in a, what do you call it? Uh, not in any college, or not college, um, any conference, rather. But still, this is in no particular order. This is actually an order that I put the, or I did the teams in. Like I did St. Ed's first and Gilmore Academy last. But St. Ed's, one of the best teams in the country, the three-time reigning Division I state champions, will go 9-1. Their only loss to Moore at Archbishop Moore, the Crusaders. St. Ignatius trying to bounce back from a rough first season under Ryan Franzinger, where they only won two regular season games, won 3-9 altogether. They did win a playoff game, so that might be something. <clears throat> I got them going four and six this year with their wins coming to Mentor again. Dublin Kaufman or Dublin Kaufman. St. Xavier and Football North in Canada. 
Mentor and Football North were the only two teams they beat during the entire football season last year. <clears throat> Mark Bishop, Hoban Knights, 8-2 record. I think they will lose to Walsh. Week 7 at Walsh and St. Ed's at Lakewood Stadium. Week 10. And just looking at them, they play a lot of schools all over the country. That's how it is for the independents. The big fellas. The big schools. St. Ed, St. Ignatius, Hoban, um, Heck, even Walsh Jesuits got a school in Pennsylvania this year. By the way, they're going 10-0. I think they can beat schools like Hoban, of course, and Padua and St. Ignatius and Brunswick and Benedictine and Ursuline and St. V, St. M. And Saint v, Saint M. Did I mention St. Ignatius? I think I did. But anyways, the Maslin Washington Tigers, they're playing schools all about the country. And the world. They play NFL Academy week one. I think they should win that. They have Football North, as mentioned earlier, Canadian team. In fact, just looking at it, they have one, two, three, four schools located in Ohio in their schedule. And Glen Oak, St. Ed's, which I think will be their only loss, Harding, and, of course, their big foe in Canton McKinley. St. V, St. M, I think, will go 7-3 and three with losses to Walsh, Ursuline, and VASJ. Benedictine, I think, will go 4-6. and six. They're trying to bounce back after some rough seasons over the last two years. And Gilmore Academy, 7-3 with losses to Hawkins, NDCL, and VASJ. So that's just how it looks. I would say the big games for the Independents, but obviously they're not in a conference. <laughs> Well, folks, 23 days, as you know by now, and as you know by now, the RWA Sears Lebanese Festival is almost here! Wowee! It's almost here. Let me check the calendar, folks. One, two more days. Two more days. August 2nd at 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then August 3rd, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Located at 507 South Cleveland Massillon Road, which is always a great place to be. They got good food, they got good games, they got good excitement, they got good entertainment, they got good prizes. They got a lot of stuff. Yes, sir. My parents are going to be working. My dad's really busy lately trying to work all the money with it. And not to mention, did I mention that um, the food is great, the atmosphere is great, the energy there is great. There's no high school sports going on. There are no high school sports going on during that time. So you got to show up. There is no other way around it, ladies and gentlemen. There is no other way around it. But anyways, just looking at my schedule. Uh, kickoff for football September 5th when the Chiefs play the, uh, who do you call them, Ravens. So that was episode, I think, 246, 47, 48, 49, 50. 250 will be the preview of the NFL. I got to get on my NFL picks immediately. My goodness. And Tommy's picks will be back in a hot minute. They will be back in, let's see here, one, two, three weeks from now. Three weeks from now is when Tommy's picks returns. I can't believe it. And in three weeks will be the introduction of a new rap song. Wow. It's like the greatest rapper in in nobody's mind just decide to come up with another song that nobody asked for. Oh, man. Oh, man. But it's about Highland football, and I hope you enjoy it. But I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's coming up in three weeks. So stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for that. Anyways, looking at the time, I think I got to go. Hope you are enjoying this time. I have to go now. My planet needs me, as Poochie says the best from The Simpsons when he died on the way back to his own planet. I hope I don't die. I, I get nervous all the time. I get nervous all the time. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I get over paranoid. But anyways, enough of that. Enough of that. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next week. Goodbye, everybody.
You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.